begin to night with an environmental a crash mystery. And debris along the beach, as far as the eye can see. That's not what on it is. Lawns, on on top of a large fish it. kill has struck along the shoreline of the Sebastian Inlet State Park. Tell us that there were up to she captured reams of dead fish dead. rolling on shore and Fishery piling up. Fishery staff are baffled at what caused these hundreds of dead fish in the bay. Five thousand blackbirds fell within a one-mile area. Roughly two million of one particular species died. Two million fish here along the Chesapeake Bay. Thousands of birds dead in the bogs of the sky. Investigation is ongoing. They got me up four o'clock in the morning, told me had birds falling out of the sky. Scientists don't know what killed them. My name is Donna Thompson. I was a communications major at American University covering the July 4th festivities in Claridge, Maryland on July 4th, 2009. No, hey, this is the first time I am speaking publicly about the disaster that happened. I was there. Yeah. Okay. Are we okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought this was going to be a little easier to talk about. Okay, take it when you're ready and um, you can continue. You okay. Go ahead. Um, my name is Donna Thompson. For three years, I and a few others have been trying to speak out about what happened in Claridge, Maryland on July 4th, 2009. But sometimes words have no impact. But now, with the help of a website called govleaks.org, all of the digital information that was recorded that day has been obtained. All of the digital information that was confiscated. Now, I don't know if anyone is gonna be watching this. I don't know if anything is gonna happen to me as a result of me putting this out there. But I do know that I can't move on with my life until this story is told. You know, it's just, um, it's hard to explain what this town used to be like. Well, it's six in the morning with Mike in the morning on this beautiful day, this day of independence. Good morning, Chesapeake, and good morning, America. Now listen, I'm a marathon man. What does that mean? Well, hopefully you're going to be with me day and night as I'm with you. We can celebrate. I can't think of a better way to celebrate than a little music from the heartland. I mean, I used to come here every summer with my folks. It's hard to explain what this town used to be like. I mean, it was fun. It was where I had my first crab dinner, my first summer kiss. So uh, that's the mayor right there, Mayor John Stockman. And he actually used to run a vacuum cleaner shop and then one day he just up and got everyone to vote for him for mayor. Right there, that's Martin and Helen Wyckoff. They were both involved in a lot of community service programs, and um, their whole family actually died that day. Three, two, one. Good morning, Maryland. Oh, wait. Sorry. Honestly, why didn't anyone tell me my pants were too tight? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that every time I look at this footage, it's it's a little difficult, and I have this tendency to overcompensate a little bit, so. Oh, well, use humor uh, to hide those emotions, I understand. Right. I mean, maybe you should have gotten a voice actor or something to do this. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotta stop this. I've been getting too many phone calls, too many complaints. For those of you who do care, it is Aaron Copeland. That's a piece from our town. What do you say we kick the energy up a little bit, huh? I was just a summer intern. I was just so excited I was going to be actually interviewing people. 
I think it's every girl's dream to be Miss Crustacean. I hope it's some, the beginning of something much, much bigger. I want to thank my parents for their support and my sister Taylor for always being there for me. Good morning, Maryland. This is Donna Thompson, and I am in Claridge, Maryland. Claridge is the host of our annual Eastern Chesapeake July 4th party, and I will be here all day to cover the event. It is my great pleasure to announce the beginning of the 57th annual Claridge Crab Eating Spectacular. So this is good old Claridge. It was uh, founded in 1903, uh, supposedly by a fisherman who ran around here and liked it so much that he started a crab restaurant. What's your name? Tyler. And have you been preparing for a while for this? Not very. Uh, there is, or was a whole population of 6,200. There's a pretty big chicken industry, a bunch of restaurants, and a whole lot of money is made from summer tourism on the water here. interview ever with Mayor Stockman. I think I made him do this interview like four different times. I think I even told him his hair dried fast because he's bald. Yep, it does dry fast. So, so I think we can we can show just about everybody that comes on down a really good time. Yeah. Cool. Of course, at the time I had no idea how culpable he was for what was about to happen. The first signs that something was very wrong happened six weeks before July 4th. It was on the news, but I don't think anybody really put the two and two together and knew what was going on. The bodies of two scientists were found in the Chesapeake Bay last night after having been reported missing for more than 36 hours. The cause of death was listed as unknown, although medical examiners found numerous wounds on the body that might be consistent with shark bites. The two scientists were oceanographers working to measure pollution levels in the bay. These were two oceanographers, one from the Cousteau Institute and another from the University of Maryland. They were uh, keeping a video diary of their research and sending it to the Chesapeake Environmental Council. Necessarily toxic. Red algae here and here does indicate bacterial growth. Now, natural resources, they think it's feeding off the nutrients in the water from the chicken runoff. That's a strange attack. Yes, it is. You don't hear about shark attacks in the bay at all. Well, I think bull sharks can be aggressive. It seems like I remember, what, a couple of attacks last year, Here maybe? There. Yeah. It is brackish throughout the Chesapeake right. Bay, and, and bull sharks have been known to come up in the bay occasionally, but... No, and I gotta tell you, it makes me a little nervous, because we have a boat, and yeah. we go out in the bay all the time. They got the results on the water analysis. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What'd you have? Uh, mercury levels way above standards, polysilic acids, OPs, PCBs that haven't been legal in 20 years, endocrine disruptors, pharmaceuticals, Viagra, estrogen, DDT, chlorodyne, trace amounts of Giardia, and uh, pretty much you name it, and it's in there. I don't know, it's kind of odd. Bull sharks usually don't bite around the abdomen and the chest area. I mean, look at here. I mean, I ain't never seen a tooth mark like that. They saw a stream of toxin is following the currents. The, follow, the wet's following the wet. You have a very thick accent sometimes. Yeah. Salmon. Yeah. This whole stream of toxin is following the current. Yes. Look, it's going next to this little town, Claridge. Claridge. <coughs> there were people who were concerned about what was going on in the bay. And with some of the townsfolk, it did cause arguments. Your chicken plants are putting chicken shit in my bay, no. and they're killing it. The important oh, thing, Jerry, you're, Jerry you're, oh, you're the important thing to understand is that the EPA continues to test the bay. Okay. And it is really, yeah. it, it's really their responsibility. It's their responsibility. Each one of these sheds has approximately 32,000 chickens in it each. Um, those chickens eat about 10,000 pounds worth of food. Um, they do this all very mathematically. You know, I don't care what people say about the bay. I know it looks a little different, but all our kids have grown up in the water in the bay. So I don't know what all the doom and gloom is all about. 
There's 45 million pounds of chicken chips dumped into the bay each year. I mean, look at that. That is entirely chicken shit. And over here, look how close we are to the water. It's right there. Chicken chip, water. We gotta have improvement in the economy. We got to develop. I say we develop the hell out of the bay, and then we can pay to clean it up. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people gave me a hard time when we put up the desalination plant. With that desalination plant, we have increased the capacity for poultry farming in the area. Basically, the desalination plant filtered water from the bay so that people could drink it and use it for the chicken industry. And everyone just assumed it would take anything harmful out of the water. Your lawns benefit from that. We have pools that are in operation. And uh, last but not least, I don't know about you, but I think this is the best darn water I've ever tasted. People were worried about the economy and the water, but mostly that wasn't their focus. They were just doing the American thing, you know, trying to make a living, dealing with their children, enjoying their lives, and everything seemed really pretty good. Dr. Jack Abrams. He was the head physician in the emergency waiting room at Atlantic Hospital. He would actually end up treating over 350 patients over the course of that day. And he would die later that night. Could you take off your shirt, please? Just, can you could turn around a little bit more? I'm just gonna point this out to the camera. CDC, is this an emergency? Yes, it is. Are you a health professional? Uh, I'm a doctor. Okay, hold please. Emergency operations? Yeah, hi, this is Dr. Jack Abrams over at the Atlantic Hospital in Claridge, Maryland. How can we help you? Uh, we're in the middle of some kind of bacterial outbreak. This is Dr. Williamson, communicable disease. Uh, you believe you may have a bacterial case? Uh, not one, we, uh, 30. What? I got 30 people in the waiting room of my hospital right now. Uh, what are the symptoms? Uh, the entire group is broken out in blisters, boils, lesions. Where? Face, neck, legs, chest. I got a woman whose entire backside is covered in boils. All right. Uh, when did this begin? This morning. Today. What do you think it is? I have no idea what it is. All right. I'm going to walk you through a list of associated symptoms. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. You've been around any livestock, agriculture, farm no. animals? You spend a lot of time in the sun? Mm, not, not really. More than usual, less than usual, same? Not really. You know, it, it hurts just in my bones. What concerns me is we've had a lot of people in today who have had similar symptoms to that. Which actually, that's, that's frankly, that's why we're doing this. So if you wouldn't mind just looking right into the lens and saying your name. Um, my name is Lamia Jezik. Great. What am, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> I mean, you're fine. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, I didn't know it was a big deal. I'm just asking you to go through a drive through The same. You do this every day. It's okay, like Grandma. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just grab the food. 
you're out. That's why it's a drive through. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Just go through. Can you this do This is it? Officer Paul. He's the one on the left. He was actually the best man at Officer Jimson's oh. wedding. Yes. They reported the first death in Claridge at 12.42 p.m. He shot? Take his phone. Oh, God, I don't want to do that. He's dead. I don't see any bullet holes there. All right, Central, this is SM-212. We've got a young white male laid out in the corner of uh, Center and Hyde. He's dead. Go ahead and dispatch EMS as soon as you can. Hey, Teresa, is anyone around? Hi. Hey. Huh? Woo! What do you think, Andrew? Oh, you like that foot. We're gonna go to Claire and see the fireworks, huh? You know what fireworks are? <laughs> this is Alex. And Stephanie Talbot. He was a, a very young, very successful dentist from Townsend. And uh, Stephanie, she grew up in Claridge before becoming a big shot lawyer in Baltimore. That's their baby. You sure? They're going to meet it. They uh, rented a boat in Wilmington to sail to Claridge for the fireworks. And that's why they're headed this way. All right, we're going to get this motorboat going. We ready for this? 911, what are you reporting? <laughs> Sorry, did you say you say something bad? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I just went over to my neighbor's house and, 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 I, and I think something really bad happened. Where are you, ma'am? street is your home on? Uh, uh, Where is she bleeding from? Somebody really tore into her. Bill and I found her over on the lawn. Her uh, guts were tore out and her tongue cut off. Her tongue was cut off. Yeah. I imagine it's a domestic. Do we know anything about the husband of Jason Spatafora? I am at the scene of the crime right now with a man named Jerry. He's a fisherman in the town. And um, you knew Miss Sporafina, is that correct? Spatafora. I apologize. They they sent us the wrong name. She was a wonderful woman, very calm, very quiet. Does this go on in the town a lot? Domestic violence cases? It just seems. I'm sorry. What? what? Try do that you one know, more time. Just I thought I was have following a murder story. I was just going through the motions, like almost trying to imitate what I thought a reporter should sound like. No. makes me cringe when I watch this now. So, all right, just do an ending thing and yeah. we've got, we got it. I didn't seem too pushy, did I? No, 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 no. I don't know, it's weird. You have to like 
be like pretend you don't feel anything about the situation when you're a reporter. But it's no, you did a, a good job. You didn't, you know, you weren't overly emotional and you weren't too, you know, too much of a reporter with him. It's good. It was a good conversation. Right. Hello, thanks. Hey. Hey. Are you excited? We're gonna go and see Grandma and Grandpa. We're not going to say anything about Grandma Pam. We're going to be drunk. Here's Daddy. Oh, look at this. Rock? I need you to look at this, okay? Okay. Just, just look at this. It's, it's like some kind of blister or something. This girl, Jennifer, she was using FaceTime with her phone to show a rash that suddenly broke out on her body. Stuff on my oh my god, my Jennifer, leg. that's disgusting. When we looked at her phone call list, it turns out she was trying to stay in contact with her friend throughout the entire day. I can't did get you, anyone on the phone. Did you put something on it? Nobody's answering. I know. It service, just goes straight to voicemail. Service is sucking ass. Every time I watch these FaceTime videos, it makes me feel sad. My parents left like an hour ago. I don't even know where they were going. They didn't even tell me they were leaving. They were just out the door. And they pulled out before I had a chance to, to even say goodbye or ask them where they were going. Does it hurt? And it, yeah, it, it does really hurt. Is this going to be okay for the audio? Yeah. The rain on I the... think it's okay. Okay, I'll speak very loudly. Um, okay, hello. We. This is very formal. Okay, we have now seen one infected fish, and we are going to be using this boroscope. Hello to go inside the fish's mouth and see if it was a, an isolated incident or not. Come with me. Inside. Okay. Secure. Perfect. And, okay. This, everyone, is parasite larvae. Ooh. Um, well, uh, parasite larvae, it's a, it's a creature whose eggs are swallowed by, by fish and then they hatch inside the belly. It's fun stuff. I've never really seen larvae like this though. I don't know where the parasites are coming from. What do you say? I just heard on the car radio that there was another murder. A, a second murder? Yeah. Only 12 blocks from the murder of uh, Marla Spatafora this afternoon, and now authorities are telling us the body was found in a rather mutilated condition. And I believe police believe that the husband could be involved in this. That's what we're hearing. Uh, some reports, perhaps, of a history of abuse there, or some allegations, at least, of abuse. You can follow her throughout the day by going to www.wvbr33news.com. Guys, uh, your luck. You are pushing your luck. This could be a career maker for her. I mean, Unbelievable. what are the odds? Unbelievable. And is she going to be able to handle this? Well, I just had to so show you these so off-air comments. I mean, they're wondering if I can handle this, and they're right. I mean, I'm chasing a murder mystery. Yeah. Nothing happening, yeah. a small town yeah. celebration. I mean, who would have thought? I'm from American University. You're up in college? That's it, guys. Off the property. I wasn't asking the right questions, and... Now she's covering the biggest yeah. story, what's going to be the biggest story of the year. It could be, it could be <laughs> Sir, we do have press yeah. pass. Press pass. Oh, my God. Oh. Looking back, I just don't understand how I still thought it was a murder case. Jim, are you getting it? I can only assume that whatever this is, is going to continue to eat away at the leg and at the knee and probably move to the upper body and into the gonads. I think that what we're talking about here are two separate strains of some kind of parasite. Something that is literally eating its way into the body from the outside. Uh, there are lesions and there's boils and also the, there's something eating its way out from inside. Now, what I need you to do is figure out what the hell this is. John, what is, what's going on? Oh, man, you know, I mean, we've never well, you had know, murders I, I, reported well, here. Well, you know, actually, um, I've, uh, I've been so busy with the re-election and, and July 4th. I mean, uh, the sheriff's office is, I, I've, I've made contact with them. It's not even labeled murder yet. Yeah. It isn't. I it's mean, just so an ongoing investigation. It's a totally open investigation, yeah. Okay. 
All right, we're back. It's Radio on the Bay. George Curry. Uh, we've got our podcast 24-7, all the updates, CoreyRadio.com. Uh, right now, we're just going to get right to it. We've got our esteemed mayor, John Stockman. He's got a very important announcement for the town. So uh, right now, we're just going to turn it over to you, Your Honor. Hey, Corey, thanks so much. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of rumors being spread. And rumors can get into nothing but trouble, as we all know. So let me give you a little more clarity as to what's going on. And we all know that during warm weather, bacteria levels can rise. And because of that, sometimes there are those of us who pick up some kind of digestive problems and sometimes rashes. It's unfortunate, but it's a fact of life here on the Bay. However, and I hope everyone is paying attention to this, let's not go around scaring one another with crazy and outlandish stories that serve no one's benefit. So, and I can't stress this enough, if, if you have a sensitivity to that type of bacteria, or if, if you just want to take per, uh, special precautions, you can limit your time in the water today. And the bacteria level here is much, much higher than even the high level we see um, after a storm and the fertilizer from the farm uh, running into the water. You're rushing on the fertilizer stuff, just slow down on that. Okay. And, and the fertilizer from the farm uh, running into the water. Um, it's uh, not good at all. It's very, very high. Yeah, that ending is kind of sloppy on, the, on that. And if I have any information, and I do mean to stress this, if I have any information that would alter those facts, and I say facts, I'll be right back here talking to you again. And Corey and everyone out there, I just want to wish you the happiest of 4th of July. Thanks again. <laughs> is that you? Is that you? Yeah. There he is. Uh, that's so big, I don't think he fits in this boat. <laughs> it looks like he's trying nice. to shoot him. Hold it, there you go, huh? Nice. That's about right, Danny. Look at that, Brad. That's huge. That's not right. Nice. Nice. Look at that thing. Danny, what are they doing with that? What is it? You've never seen nothing like what that. What is that? Son of a bitch! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Get that off of me! Get that back! Wait! Holy shit, that thing is All right, welcome back, Radio on the Bay. It's George Corey. We are live on the air, and of course, 24-7, we got our podcast. You can grab them, RadioCorey.com. Now, there's a lot of speculation, a lot of phone calls coming in. People not quite sure what to make of this, but theories do abound, my friends. It's true. Maybe a satanic cult has invaded the town. There's drugs loose in the air. We have got theories running wild. I think it's Al-Qaeda Al or whatever it's called. It's a terrorist plot to poison the food supply. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of information of, about the flu shots and the vaccines and how they've they been warned about the pesticides. They're spraying all the food with them these days. I saw this strange cloud. It was hovering over the water down by the bay. It was, it was a very circular uh, shape. Biological warfare, um, Iran, and, and they're probably trying to you know get people out of Guantanamo. I'm going to say it's about just global warming and stuff. Okay, we have some uh, more dead fish here, um, all mutilated. Uh, what? All mutilated. Oh, oh mutilated. Uh, we have uh, here, we have um, the tongue is missing on these. No tongue? And on these others, uh, the flesh looks almost like, uh, like it's been bitten. It's uh, very confusing. Why is that? But I'm not sure who does this. Um, fish don't bite fish. There she is. So tired of her. Come on, let me film you. No, 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 I don't want to end up on the internet. Oh, come on. It's not like I'm going to make it on my Facebook page and see what the comments are. <laughs> well, I might actually, now that I think about it. Who knows, I could end up being a pretty big star. Uh-huh, sure. A big star, whatever. This was okay, Denise Button's digital camera. She was a star pitcher for the softball team. Get shirt off. Uh, Let me see this. I don't think so. Oh, come on. Because I want to see how beautiful you are. You are, you know. <laughs> you know my mom doesn't like us being together in the first place. Why would I just be even worse? Be 
because you like me. Jellyfish. Oh, haha, ha, very funny. You're not getting to me. They're just jellyfish. apparently found a month later by a 12-year-old on the shore. Their bodies were never discovered. So, pretty here. Hey. Hello. Oh my god, look behind you. What? Look behind you. Like a sign. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, you want to make a little love? <laughs> Knock it up. It's not a sex sign. <laughs> oh, well, it is to me. It is a sex sign. To me. No, it is not a sign. Come on. No. Sometimes when I watch this footage, this private footage. I mean, here they are, they're being playful, they're loving one another. And they have no idea that something so much darker and sinister is about to happen. Oh, definitely. Oh my god! Oh my god! No, 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 no. Here we go. Let's okay. just cool off a little bit. Oh my god! Out, 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 out of the camera! No, 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 no. Put me down. Put me down. Out of the camera. Ah, that's a hole. Oh! 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 right. Wow. Oh! <laughs> Oh, jeez. How does it feel in there? Oh. <laughs> oh, someone in my mouth. Oh. Oh, good. You're coming in at some point. You know that, don't you? Look at you up there on your high boat. <laughs> About 100 years ago, the sea floor was entirely gas bed with uh, enough oysters to self clean. About every four days. Uh, today, uh, the bay is 40% uh, dead zone. There's nothing here. Wait, I don't understand. Are you saying that 40% of the bay is a dead zone? Is it? Is it okay? No, no, it's not clear that 40% is dead. Dr. Abrams, the CDC is on the line. They're on right now. Well, can you get somebody to get an orderly, get that guy out of the hall? Put him in 104. Well? Well? Uh, yeah, you said that you have... Uh, 30 of these yeah, I have about 60 people with some kind of blister and lesion outbreak. Some of them went into anaphylactic shock. I have uh, excuse overgrowth. me, you said now you have 60 I just cases? I three people with their tongues half gone. Okay, that's uh, a lot of information. Did you administer methicillin to the lesion victims? Yeah, of course I gave them methicillin. It had no response. What do you mean? It kept spreading. In how many cases? In all of the cases. Okay, that's important. Yeah, I know that's important because they still have spreading lesions. Do you have, do you have any new information for me? Uh, not at this time. Um, this could be any number of things. It could be fungal or bacterial. Uh, we Fun. had a tropical fungus outbreak last year in Vancouver. It spread in about three hours, actually. Vancouver, three hours? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, about 30, we lost about 30 people died, I think. But it was just the fact that we hadn't seen it in the Northern Hemisphere before. Now, I, I did want to ask you, did you say that you had people with half their tongues gone? Uh, yeah, hold on. You didn't get pictures? Did you send those pictures to the CDC? You did? You, you should have an attachment there with pictures that we sent you. Do you have them? Okay. Okay, we're coming to you from uh, the Straits at Claridge, where we think we have found dun, dun, dun. the culprit. Let's go take a, a look inside the laboratory here. Let's see what we got. As you can see here, we have these parasites that seem to have latched onto the gills. 
Oh my god, this is disgusting. Right oh. here. You get it? There. This is called an isopod. Right here. It's one of the world's oldest creatures. It dates back from the Carboniferous period. Here. Look at that. What is that? Look at that. It ate right through the fish's tongue. This is enormous. Oh. Do you think this is an anomaly? Do, do I think it's anomaly? What? No, do you think it's normal? No, oh, anomaly. Um, no, I don't huge. know. I think it's. It must be some kind of mutated version. Isopods shouldn't even be in the brackish water. This is a huge one. Oh, look at this. All these isopods are eating this fish alive. I don't understand this. It doesn't make any sense. What is it? I think, I think you need to see this. Jennifer, what's that noise? Oh, oh my look, god. Look at this. What's look. wrong with everyone? That's Mr. Look at Long. all these people. They, they need help. Did, did you just hear that? Look, look at this. Look at this. Look. look. Please, please, somebody. They were just there for a car show. Within 24 hours, he got ill. And they said with this parasite, that is what happened. Only his feet touched the water, but a short time later, he became sick. Doctors say he was infected by a bacteria called Vibrio vulnificus. If he survived, he would have lost his arms and legs. When walking through brackish water or at the beach, uh, if you get a cut, don't just think it's going to go away. You have to seek medical attention immediately if it starts to turn red or you start to feel really bad. The Vibrio vulnificus bacteria can lead to heart failure, loss of limbs, or death. All right, this is the leg of a man treated today at Atlantic Hospital in Maryland. This is the IR slide of the same infection. Notice the bruising below the skin. It looks like Vibrio vulnificus. Now, it's a bit different than the normal symptoms of a Vibrio or a Cryptosporidium outbreak. And we got people up there with their tongues half gone. So what do we got here, people? Stephanie. Stephanie, where are you? You're not answering your phone. I've been trying to reach you. I'm at the hospital. Your dad is at the hospital. They're taking him in. He has some kind of very bad infection. And I think they're going to amputate his leg. It's crazy here. I mean really crazy here. So the most important thing is to know that I do not want you to get off that boat. Do you me, Stephanie, don't get off the boat. Hey, Stephanie, come up here for a minute, will you? And if there is something else I want you to know. Look at this boat. I think I need to tell you. Hey, grab this camera. I have lesions. Grab the camera. No. And um, I think a lot of people here are edge, not going to make it. And fill it off the side. I'm going to come up. Here it comes. But remember, I love you. And I will try to call again. Nobody in it. Can you see anyone in the water? I don't think we can rule out a foodborne virus or anything airborne, but this looks like a water vector. Agreed. The blistering looks like echinococcosis. Uh, the lesions could be Mycobacterium marinum or Schistosomiasis. I mean, Jesus, there could be cholera in there. Yeah, but I don't see it spreading this fast. If the water is being polluted with anything chemical on top of the bacteria, we could easily be looking at a new form evolve. Uh, maybe a fungal bacteria, maybe a mutated tapeworm, who knows? 
I need labs back in two I need labs back in two I need curl right and I need morphine. Doctor, somebody call materials management. Dr. Abrams. I need four by eight. Dr. Abrams. What? It's the fellow you amputated. What about it? It's on the other leg. What? It's on the other leg. I need morphine in two and I need labs back. I need labs back. I have EPA on the line. What the hell's going on at the Chesapeake Bay? What are you talking about? Is there anything in there that could cause disease, bacterial outbreak, or mutations? Well, the bay has been found to have pollutants, um, algae, agricultural runoff, chicken excrement. Um, Go on. There was a small leak from a nuclear reactor in 2002, but uh, we weren't expecting it to hit the bay until 2014, but it is coming through the ground, so it could have hit earlier. Are people drinking this water? Of course not. The bay is brackish. You can't drink it. But there is a level of seepage into local wells and, of course, a desalination plant in Claridge. With that desalination plant, we have increased the capacity for poultry farming in the area. Those chickens drink about 2,000 gallons of water a day. I think the NEF said it was 0.3 liters of dirty water, so there could be radium or tritium in there. Infrastructures, pharmaceuticals, algae, agricultural runoff, chicken excrement. There was um, a small leak from a nuclear reactor in 2002. And you don't want any of Well, it's not under our regulations to test for radioactivity levels in water, but half the water in America probably has some leaks in it. Yep. Don't you regulate the water? The filtered water has met all regulatory standards. That dome over there has been a pounds of chicken chip dumped into the bay each year. This is the best darn water I've ever tasted. That's my cameraman, Jim Hoyt. Hey, um, Katie Current, can you just chill the fuck out for two seconds? I think that's the only time we actually ever see him. That's not an insult. He died that night. I know you do. And um, a lot of this footage is thanks to him. Where are you going? The governor's office. Yeah, um, hi, this is Dr. Jack Abrams. I'm at the Atlantic Hospital in Claridge. I need to speak to the governor. Uh, the, well, the governor is away from his desk at the moment. I don't understand how the, the nurses are just like hurrying by and they're not even stopping. Look at that. She didn't even stop. Scoot up. Look, I am. There are like 20 feet in front of us. <laughs> God. Stop honking the horn. Please stop texting. Please don't be YouTubing this. Please. Oh my God, she just said YouTubing. We're having an outbreak of some kind here, a medical outbreak down here in Claridge. People are dying here. I have been speaking to the CDC, and they are moving at a snail's pace. Listen, I will pass the message on to the governor as soon as he gets back. What do you mean you have it? Well, go, go, go out there and document everybody that is. Don't document me. Don't waste the damn time. Get back in, please. Nobody ever got off that bridge. It was shut down for three days, actually. Um, I did a lot of research. There's no record of who ordered it shut down. I got it on autopilot. Okay. Yeah. GPS is amazing. Oh, yeah. really mastered the technology. They said take the next right, though, and I don't know what they're referring to. You know we don't have to be here. They're not going to post any of this. The FBI is not going to allow it. Is okay, it well, there's a little something called the First Amendment. This is it rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Good evening. This is Donna Thompson reporting from what used to be the fairgrounds of the July 4th party. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? What the fuck is that? I'm sorry, the Skype broke up a little bit. What did you say? Just echoing in the air, I mean, all different directions. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, it was very faint, but it was very um, 
prominent. I mean, I heard them coming from here. I've heard them coming from there. It was far away, but uh, it was um, it was very ghost-like. You know, I and the 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 pain in the people's voices. I could hear them. They were like cries or like cries for help. But you didn't know where anyone was. No, I had no idea where anybody was. I need you to respond to the corner of St. James and High Market. We just had a phone call in reference to hearing some screaming or some type of loud verbal noises from across the street. Things like a group or, or one person. I don't know. Right? Maybe one of those cults, you know, like they were talking about on the radio? I don't know. Stay here. Keep your eyes out, huh? All right. Please open up. Please open up. I'm going to go in. Hello? Hello? This is Donna Thompson reporting from what used to be the fairgrounds of the July 4th party. Um, at the moment, we are not quite sure what's going on. So you just got this? Yeah, from a research professor at the University of Maryland. And this uh, Samothua exigua, uh, do we have any information on this? Yeah, the exigua is a testaceous isopod normally found in the Pacific. It's been making a number of appearances in the Atlantic. Last year, they found a two and a half foot one trying to burrow its way into a submarine. The thing thought it was a dead whale. <laughs> but are you making this up? This looks Photoshopped. No, it's real. So, 
how's that getting into the water supply? Well, in, at normal scale, they're quite common. The fishermen call them sea lice. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's, it's this big. How's it going to get through a filtration system? Well, what about the larva? All right, we're, we're, now we're bringing up more questions than we can answer. We've got to find out what happened to those two divers. Yeah? Let's go. Okay, here we are. We got a nice break in the weather. So we're going to go catch the current out to uh, Claridge. Take a up close personal look at these parasites. See what we're dealing with. So you take a look around. Beautiful. Breathtaking. One of the most beautiful estuaries in all of America. You'd have no idea what's underneath. How was that? Was that not very good at all? What? Now he's very good. Okay, one more time, a little crisper. I feel like I'm sitting very strangely. Do people sit like this? Okay. But now bring the uh, bring the camera to me. I'm gonna take a get up. Get some beauty shots here. Get a sense of place here. You see the vista here and the sun. The beautiful water. Beautiful placid water. You have no sense of how the ecosystem is actually being affected. You have no idea of the nightmare underneath here. We're taking up close and personal look at these parasites to see what we're actually dealing with. We'll go take a look ourselves. You can see in this footage that the oceanographers dove right into a school of fully grown isopods. This is not the sea lice variety or the larva. This is what killed them. And what killed those young teenagers. The question we continue to ask is, did the authorities not look at this footage or chose not to reveal it? Jim. Jim, do you hear that? I hear something. Yeah, I hear it. Can you come closer? What do I need to do? 
Well, I, I would suggest that you and your staff leave the hospital. My staff left 20 minutes ago. Well, good, that's wise. Why, that's, why is that wise? Well, because the, the bacteria, uh, the, once it's entered the human body, it's a miracle you aren't infected already, as a matter of fact. I'm, I'm fine. Well, that's good. But what I'm saying is that at this point it is too late, doctor, and I strongly suggest that you leave the hospital immediately. Look, I have people, I have people in pain here. I'm amputating feet, I'm amputating legs, I'm amputating arms. You want me to get up and you want yes, to leave the hospital? Yes, I'm aware of that, doctor, and, and we are sorry. You need to get, you need to get somewhere, get some help. Don't come here, because they're not going to help you. And they're not helping me. It looks like there are dead bodies up there. It's only a rat. I'm how can, serious. Dead people. How can they're people not be dead? Just collapse. And no one's coming out to get them. Nothing. And no one's helping? No, no, no one. Cooper, is your tongue hurting? My, mine hurts so badly. I'm just, I'm really scared. I don't know what to do. I just don't, I don't want to hang up. I don't want to be by myself. I can't get, get anyone. Can you see my parents? Are they here? Oh, a bunch of dead shit in the water. Oh, there's that stuff. Have you heard anything from the governor yet? Yes, Lee, I talked to him. And the governor wants to know if we should call a state of emergency. And I told him to give us a few more hours to handle this. Some of the folks have nothing wrong with them, for heaven's sake. And the CDC doesn't even know if it's contagious. Look, we've got the National Guard isolating us from surrounding communities as a preventative measure. If we get people in here with those hazmat suits, all hell's gonna break loose. And listen, Lee, right now we have no media on this except that student running around with a camera. And the FBI shut down her blog. So let's keep it that way. And Lee, you and your deputies have got to get on top of this. I lost all contact with my deputies about 30 minutes ago. What? I, I'm not getting any response from my guys. Uh, well, we shut down all the towers to kill the cell phones, but it shouldn't affect you guys. Listen. Lee, why don't you swing by and pick me up right now? Uh, I want to get a first-hand look at what's going on out there. All right, I'll, I'll be by there in about five minutes. You okay? okay? I don't think I've ever been so scared in my whole life. The blood off my face. What? Is the blood off my face? No, you got a ton on your side. What's that? What, what? is that? What is it? Holy shit. What the fuck? What? Oh. oh my god. Look at his face. Oh my god. Look at his face. Oh my god, look at me. I was running in a circle. I mean, if it wasn't, I mean, if this wasn't a tragedy situation, it would actually be somewhat comedic. Um, I was just so fucking scared. I, I never reported another thing after that until I made this film. I, that was actually the last footage we shot. Well, I'll come and get the rest of this stuff when we figure out where we're going. Where are you leading us other than off of this dock? Sean, so, like, where do you think? I, I have no idea. I can't get a hold of this. This is quite a greeting, isn't it? Oh, this gosh. is pretty nice. You know, would you please? It's all documented. This is the quietest Fourth of July I have ever seen. We missed the fireworks. What the hell is going on? Yeah, what's really necessary for you to get video of this? Yes, I am sh filming the lack of fireworks so that we can show your parents we were here for the non-festivity. Oh, great. You know, they'll... When Alex and Stephanie got to Claridge, more than 700 people had died. Moment, us being lost. Maybe yeah, and here they were coming in with a baby. 
celebrations for Fourth of July. Would you please, you know, if you would turn the damn camera off and help me look for them, that might be a little oh, more useful. You're doing great. Yeah, this is fantastic. You know, I love it when this you make ridiculous. me be the grown-up and you don't do any of the work. They all look What the hell is that? Oh, my God. Oh, God. Alex, Alex, do not... Oh, shit. Alex, do not take... Hello? I want to get out of here. Oh, my God. Look at this. Do not get any closer to her. I want to get out of here. Where are we going to go? I don't want to be out here with a dead body and Andrew here. Oh, Jesus. Stop. No, just Get give me. Don't touch her. Yes, of course, a toxic soup of chemicals could produce certain mutations. What's also concerning is the level of chicken excrement in the bay. I mean, if the numbers you gave me are correct, the amount of steroids and that amount of manure um, could be accelerating growth by 50, 60 times. That's both in size and quantity. This stuff has so much chemical steroid in it, it will take a little birdie, turn it into a full-grown birdie, and 42 days, what Mother Nature would take, six months. They think it's feeding off the nutrients from the chicken runoff. We've noticed a five-to-one female-to-male ratio among these fish here. We could easily be looking at a new form evolved. Son of a bitch! It must be some kind of mutated version. Isopods shouldn't even be in the brackish water. I would like to give Buzz a big round of applause for getting these misters going. Are people drinking this water? Someone in my mouth. How's it going to get through a filtration system? What about the larva? From a desalination plant in Claridge. Be looking at a new form evolved. Steroids. So much chemical steroid. Mutated version. They found a two and a half foot one trying to burrow its way into a submarine. Jane. Jane. Uh, give me. Will you give me the White House? people came up to Main Street and they were just waiting for an EMS or an ambulance or someone to come by. They were just waiting and hoping. We gonna get back on the boat in the middle of the night without any gas? I want to call the police. You just told me that there is no cell phone service. You just told me. Well, can me we that. go someplace where we have service so we can call the police? Uh, I don't want to be look, here. With this place is open. This place is open up here. Let's go in here. Well, you Come on, let's just go in here and regroup. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Oh my God. Oh shit. Um, there's some stuff down here. How is Andrew? He's fine. He's sleeping. Well, this couldn't be creepier. Can we make sure there are no more dead people yes. in here? Make sure. No, this is good. This is good. Let's stay here. I'm going to see if I can find a landline. Maybe I can get one to work. Okay. I'm going to go out and see if I see anyone on the street at all, if it's cops or something. We'll find them. We'll find them. We'll find them. Nothing's happened. We just, we just we have some, you know, we have some deputies off radio. I find these guys are playing a joke on me. Well, they're fired. I've never had this happen. Well, there's got to be a reason. I'm going to make the next town meeting, I can tell you that. We're going to have to get some... No, come on, Lee. It's the last thing we need right now. What's that? You good? Put your, put your seatbelt on. Oh, Jesus. You're riding in a police car. Yeah, I'm worried about my seatbelt. That's what I'm worried about, right? This car. I think that's Jemison's car. Can't be for sure. Wait, is that him in the car? I don't know whose house this is. I mean, is... No, what the hell is he doing, Lee? Oh, wait a minute. That's Jim. What's wrong? What's wrong with him? He looks like he's done something. He's drunk. He's got his gun out. Go away. What's the matter, Jim? Come here, buddy. Come here. Something's wrong with this guy. Oh, God, he's got... Oh. Go away, Jim! Go away! Come on, Jim. Just chill out, buddy. Let's go! Come on. 
Come on and get in the back of the car. Get in the back of the car, Jim. I'll take you to the hospital. Come Let's go. go. We'll take you somewhere. Come on, bud. Don't let me lose you, Jim. Come on now. We're all going to die. <laughs> Oh, God. Like it's okay, that. buddy. I'm coming to get you. No, Lee, please. No, 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 no. Let him go. Lee. No, no, no. We gotta get him. Lee. You stay For here. Jim. You're eating my pheasant. Jim, buddy, let's get in the car. Pleasure. Let's go somewhere. We're all Come on. Die. Come on. Hey, what you should have Come to die like this. Huh? No, you're not gonna die. Nobody's gonna die. No, get in the car. I, I you can't. Don't, you don't have to die I like this, sir. I can't touch you, but come on and get in the car. No, Jim, no, wait a minute. No, deputy, put that gun down. to, you know, to uh, meet up with my parents, and, um, uh... Where are you, in an antique store or something? On, there, are these, there are dead bodies everywhere, Bill. What? And... Bill, the entire town is covered in dead fucking bodies. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Bill! All right. Please. What, are you guys serious? Yeah, we are entirely fucking serious here, Bill. Oh. Well, okay, call the cops, guys. No, we... We call the cops, but we can't get through to them. We can't get through to my parents. Our cell phones aren't working. We can't get service. We, we need for you to, for you to okay. do something. All right. Uh, where are you? Claridge. 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 Maryland, for God's sake. I called the, uh, somebody, anybody. Right, just hey, get us some help here, please. Tell me what happened to you. We don't know what happened. I mean, what is that on your neck? What's on my neck? Oh, my God. Alex. What is it? Oh. Dr. Jack Abrams. I am a physician at the Atlantic Hospital in Maryland. I'm making this video in the hope that I will be able to watch it at some point in the future, and I'm going to show the world what happened here. Uh, I'm coming out into the hall now. I locked myself in the ICU for. I, uh, the CDC has stopped making my phone calls, contacted FEMA, help hasn't arrived. I think I, I now know what is killing people. I mean, we, we were looking for some kind of virus, some kind of viral outbreak, and when we called CDC, they needed to send a fucking army down here to, sh to put some goddamn minds together to find what I know now, which this is not a virus, this is an organism. It is an organism that has somehow infiltrated these people's bodies. The, the blistering that we found, that's, that's a symptom. It, it, it is not, like that, 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 has what, that's, that is what threw us off. It is the isopod. It's, it's eating their organs. It, it's, it's eating them, it's literally, it's eating them from the inside. I mean, it is eating their intestines, it is eating their liver. It goes for kidneys, lungs, tissue. This is a rapidly growing, accelerating organism. How it's growing this fast, I have no idea. Um, I noticed this rash about 45 minutes ago. And I'm gonna continue to take the camera and I'm gonna document everything that I see here. If you find this tape, just please get it out. Get it out.
Stephanie, would you uh, please talk uh, to me? What's happening? What's wrong, Jimmy? What's wrong? Alex, keep going. I just fire my stuff. larva he swallowed in the bay had grown into a full-sized parasite in eight hours from the toxic soup. Hi, this is Steve Slattery over at Homeland Security. I'm, I just wanted to get back to you on that message about uh, Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, and? Yeah, uh, uh, turns out we did hear something a few weeks back about a, a couple of divers' bodies being found in the water. Uh, Natural Resource Police thought it was uh, a bull shark bite. Uh, and they were getting ready to pull people out of the water and uh, put up a shark alert, but uh, medical examiner determined that it was not a shark bite at all. What was it? They weren't sure, so they uh, sent the reports over to us, and then we we sent them over to the Coast Guard, and they said it didn't make any sense to them, so then we sent it to FEMA, and they never responded, so I figured we'd send it to you. Yeah, that's good. What did the report say? Well, uh... Kind of strange stuff. It said the cause of death was undetermined uh, due to a multiplicity of parasites and a uh, variety of infections. Do you, do you want a copy of this report? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, funny enough, I would love to see a copy of that report. So let me get this straight. Two divers are found with a bunch of holes in them, and all that we know is they're mysteriously being eaten by parasites and infections. That's right. Nobody knows what happened, and it takes 16 days to get this information to us? Listen, we set up an incident center without cause, and we're in deep doo-doo here. Really? Well, I've got a town full of dead bodies. A small town. I think we need to keep this whole thing in perspective here. What kind of perspective are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, it's not that easy to pull the, tri the trigger on something like this. We we blow up a non-issue and shut down the entire Chesapeake Bay. I mean, we're talking about beaches, restaurants, vacation fishing. The public panics if word gets out that we're setting up an incident center about a spreading disease, or for a spreading disease. You don't just shut down the eastern seaboard without approval from a higher, higher authority. Great, I understand. Thank you very much, Officer Slattery. That's it? Okay. Thanks. They came in the hazmat suits, and the National Guard came, and then they quarantined the town for another three days, and that was when they confiscated every single camera they could find. You know, there were those who survived, and for some reason they never became sick. Uh, the town as a whole reached a financial agreement with the government. Um, I don't know how much money changed hands, but I do know that silence was part of the agreement. I tried to reach out to people like Stephanie, but she didn't want to participate in this film.
Oh, and by the way, the official line from the government was that the outbreak was due to unseasonably high water temperatures. This is Donna Thompson, signing off.